Self-driving technology. It's one of the hottest features in modern cars. Sure, it still has a lot of kinks that need to be worked out, but most of the time, as long as you aren't sleeping at the wheel and you basically treat the self-driving technology more like adaptive cruise control combined with lane assistance, and if you only use it on the highway, then you'll probably be safe and most likely make it to your destination in one piece. But the real dream with self-driving technology, which has been described by Elon Musk himself, is getting it to the point where your car is able to run errands for you. I believe the exact scenario that Elon described was a sort of Tesla ride-sharing service where an owner of a Tesla could drive or ride in the Tesla while the AI drives them to work or some other place where they're going to be at for several hours. And during those hours, instead of the Tesla just sitting in what is most likely going to be a very expensive parking lot that you're renting if you're in the city, you know, instead of it sitting there costing you money, it could be out driving around other people who don't have their own cars as some sort of a fully automated Uber and be making money for you. Or if you needed to share your car with a friend or someone else in your family that needs to go to work, you could easily do that as long as you guys don't need the car at the same time or you know you don't need it within an hour or half an hour, however long it takes the car to drop you off and then go drive back and pick up the other person. And if self-driving actually gets good enough to where something like this is a real possibility, like it can be used in residential neighborhoods and it can safely deliver itself to another driver, then the people who can't afford these expensive cars on their own, they could realistically pool their money together and I guess buy timeshares on a Tesla rather than just buying a whole Tesla by themselves. And it would make sense. I mean, if you think about it, how many hours throughout the day you're actually behind the car driving for most people, it's what, one, maybe two? If you only needed to buy one eighth of a Tesla, all of a sudden, it doesn't seem that expensive. Need to buy some groceries? No problem. A self-driving car could go to the grocery store for you. And since most big grocery store chains already have options for curbside pickup of your groceries, they'll be bagged up for you and ready to go. It really could just be as simple as your car driving itself to the pickup spot, opening up its trunk automatically, and then an employee just loads your car up and then it closes the trunk automatically and drives back to you. And you never have to get stranded at a mechanic shop while your car is getting worked on ever again, because as long as your car is still able to drive itself, then it can send itself to the shop to get maintenance done. Or heck, even if it isn't able to drive itself, it could get towed away, and then when it's completely repaired, it can drive itself back to you, and then you're able to go on using it. The number of benefits that people will get with self-driving technology seems endless, but I don't think too many people really think about the negatives of self-driving technology. Besides cars crashing, of course, obviously that's one glaring issue that everyone knows about, but I'm talking about future problems that we're going to face when self-driving technology actually is figured it out, when governments allow it to be used on public roadways, and it actually is fully self-driving, like you don't have to necessarily have your hand on the wheel and things like that. There's a lot of things that people aren't going to like that this tech can be used for, like cars that can repossess themselves. Ford actually filed a patent for this back in 2021, and the patent document has recently become public. Now, of course, this isn't something that exists right now. It's just an example that was submitted with the patent application of how something like this would work. So, of course, your car is connected to the internet, especially if it's a self-driving car. You are absolutely gonna be plugged into the matrix with that thing. So when the lender who you're supposed to be paying for your car, you know, if you're leasing the car, 
contacts you and you're ignoring messages from them, you know, you're trying to duck them because they're going to be texting you and emailing you. So they're going to know if you're playing games and then they can just go ahead and shut your card down or they can shut down specific things like they talk about in this patent that they could turn off the AC. If you're on a climate that's really hot, that might be enough of a deterrent to get you to pay back your loan or you know pay your loan, get caught up with it. Uh, turn off the MP3 playing capabilities, you know music capabilities, things like that. Although I guess you could just play music from the speakers on your phone. Now, of course, if the car has self-driving capabilities and driverless vehicles are ever allowed on public roadways, then this patent would also apply to a system where a vehicle can automatically take itself to a repossession agency or a junkyard to be scrapped if the vehicle doesn't have any viable resale value. Now, there's some other locations that are mentioned on this network, like a police authority and a medical facility. And these are associated with some exceptions that can be made to any vehicle lockouts. So they explicitly say in the patent application that the system could be designed in such a way to detect emergencies such as a heart attack and allow the vehicle to be temporarily unlocked so that it could be driven to a medical facility or to notify the authorities that an emergency medical event has taken place. And depending on the nature of the person's delinquency with payments on the vehicle, different kinds of restraints can be put in place than just doing a full lockout, such as locking the vehicle only on the weekends or after a certain time of day so that the person can use it for commuting to work to make more money to pay off their loan, but they can't use it for having fun or geofencing could be used to restrict the vehicle to traveling within a certain area. And if you go outside of it, then your car is gonna get disabled. So it really sounds like Ford thought of everything with this theoretical system. And in a lot of ways, it is better than the current repo system that we have where people who are not paying their bill are not actually paying for their car can just hide it in a closed off garage. And in most repo situations, a person has to actually go to that delinquent person who's basically stealing a car. They have to go to their property and take the car back, which obviously puts the repo man in a very dangerous position. A lot of people get killed or get injured trying to repo people's cars. So if this tech becomes a reality, we're probably going to see it adopted on all new vehicles, not just Fords, even though they're the ones that have the patents. Uh, which is a very scary thing because, as you probably guessed, there's a lot of problems with this theoretical self-repoing, self-locking system. If you put a computer in people's cars that can disable it completely or make it drive to a specific area once a remote command has been issued, there's a serious risk that the programs that are doing this under the hood can have bugs in them that cause it to do it at a random time, that cause your car to drive off because of some miscalculation thinking that you haven't paid for it, or it can be exploited in some way to make the car do this when it shouldn't. But honestly, the computers that are inside of the car are not really the ones that I'm worried about. My biggest concern would be with the computers that are owned by the car company or the lending institution, that send the signal to your car to disable it because you're behind on payments or them having a bug in, I guess, the accounting database that tracks your payments on the vehicles. That can have some type of error showing that you're delinquent on your payments, which ultimately makes the computer send a signal to your car to disable it. Financial institutions are already frequently targeted by hackers and they have sensitive information stolen from them on a regular basis and then it gets sold on the dark net. But if this automated repossession system becomes commonplace and many financial institutions start having computers connected to it, then hackers could just potentially hack that financial institution, gain access to the system that controls each and every car for people that are leasing their vehicles, 
or they could just make people delinquent in the accounting databases and then even if they're not able to touch the computers running the system, it might just automatically run this depending on what checks and balances are put in place. And then they're going to send each and every vehicle that someone has a loan on through the bank out into the streets. There's gonna be a parade of driverless vehicles that could be created whenever a hacker needs it. I don't even think Watch Dogs had any exploits like this in that game. Once again, the cyberpunk future of real life is starting to look worse than what we've seen in video game fiction. And things get a lot darker the more that I think about how this technology can be abused because if it can lock a person out and drive itself away to a repo agency or basically anywhere, why wouldn't it be able to lock a person in and then drive itself to basically anywhere? It seems like doing something like that would be as simple as just changing a few lines of code in the program. And it also seems like the kind of thing that even if the manufacturer were to design the system to not do that, it could be hacked by a government agency in order to target certain individuals. And even though most people will never end up doing anything to actually get on one of the government's special list where they might end up hacking your car to use this technology against you, the fact that all of the infrastructure is there, the black box computer that has complete control over your car, which you can't access yourself, but the manufacturer can, and third parties like lending institutions and inevitably the police will be able to as well. Or if you post one too many spicy anti-government memes, the glowies can just do you like they did Michael Hastings and make your vehicle accelerate into a tree or a wall while you're inside of it. So it looks like old cars and old think pads are what you're going to need to survive the future cyberpunk dystopia.